All right, so the macro economy. Again, what is the difference between macro and micro? Right, dealing with the full economy, right? So macroeconomy, the study of full economy topics. And remember that, that macro doesn't necessarily mean big, right? Because we could look at the economy of just the city of Janesville by itself. Very, very, very small entity. But we could talk about what is unemployment in Janesville. We could talk about what are interest rates for home loans in Janesville, right? It yeah, it just has to involve everybody in that economy, however you define the economy, all right? So the question then is, what's the goal of the macroeconomy? What was the goal of the microeconomy? That's right. Kill as many people as you can. I mean, make as much money as you possibly can, right? All you cared about was profit, 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 profit in the micro world. Which, if you think about it, that makes the class, that section of the class easier, right? Because all you cared about was money. You didn't have to think about anything other than money. Unfortunately, now there's more than one goal in the macro economy. So that means it's going to be harder. I mean, depends on how you look at it. There are three goals in the macro economy. The first one, which you should probably expect, is that we want economic growth, right? In the macro economy, you want there to be growth in your economy, right? That's, that's what everybody's always screaming about, is that there's growth. If there's not growth, then, oh my god, we're in a recession, and everybody has a cow. You know, and then we have to elect a new president, a new senator, a new congressman, and right, we kick the old out, and we bring in the new, because the new's going to be better. It's going to make growth happen. Don't ask me how, that's unimportant, just as long as it's new. All right? Now, with economic growth, the other thing that we are constantly screaming for at a macro level is everybody should be working. Right? The whole concept of everybody who wants a job should have a job type of business. So whenever anyone who is taking care of the macro economy these should be one of their two goals. The third goal that an, an economy has are stable prices. So those are the three goals of the macroeconomy. And, and these things are what every macroeconomic policy should be doing. One of these three, at least one of these three. If it's not doing at least one of these three, then it's definitely a problem. Okay? But that should be its goal. So whenever you read something that's talking about a macro-level econo economic topic, unemployment, GDP, you know, inflation, interest rates, whatever, you should note that one of the things that, that the change is being done should try and do one of these three things, period. Right? Always. Now, generally speaking, these two always go together. All right? So if you tell me that there is economic growth, you should also always be telling me that there is going to be more employment or less unemployment, whichever phrase you like better. Okay? Always. Okay? So if you ever tell me that there's going to be less employment and, and economic growth, yeah, that, that's, that's like taking your foot, shoving it down your throat, and then swallowing it and somehow expecting it to come out and be okay. Don't do that. It doesn't work. <laughs> OK? So these two always go together. If there's economic losses, if we're in a recession, employment is going down, period. OK? That's just the way it works. All right? Stable prices, on the other hand, is always going in the opposite direction of the first two. If you are having economic growth, if there is growth happening in the economy, people are having more and more money, right? Because we are all getting a job, we're all earning the income we expect to earn. What do we do when we have money, folks? We spend it. The more we buy stuff, what happens to the prices of the things we buy? They go up. Whenever you have economic growth, you will tend to also have inflation. Likewise, when you have economic recessions, when we are not buying things, <laughs> what
what happened to prices? Nothing, essentially, right? They at least stay stagnant or they actually fall a little bit. And in fact, if you think about it, over the last three years, have you heard anyone talk about inflation? Not even a peep, right? I mean, hardly at all, except for the real wackos who are constantly saying, oh my god, what the government's doing is going to lead to hyperinflation in the near future. You know, and, and they, they should look like the robot in, you know, lost in space that's making the arm things. And Isn't that what, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the idea, though, is that these tend to be the two things that you worry about when you're having a particular problem, right? So if you're having economic losses, you're not worrying about prices. When you're having economic growth, what do you worry about? Inflation, Inflation right? If you think back to 2005 and 2006, which that's a while ago now, I mean, but that was the last time we saw real heavy economic growth. What was our biggest concern back then? Inflation. We were all worried about inflation. It's like, oh my god, we need to somehow worry about prices getting too high. Because once those prices get too high, it's going to affect economic growth. And then economic growth will stop. And if economic growth stops, what happens to prices? Naturally, they start to chill out, right? So it, these sorts of things tend to fight each other, all right? Oh, yeah, totally. That's chapter 12. We'll talk about business cycles. But we got to get through chapter 11 first. All right, so this is the setup. This is what we're trying to do. I am going to try for the first three weeks of class to always ask you the very first thing, what are the first three goals of the macro economy? Because this actually isn't in the book, OK? I mean, the, yeah. So, so these three things you need to always have in the back of your head. And unfortunately, the book kind of says nothing about them up front. It just sort of dives right into it immediately, OK? So. Our goal, then, is to say, well, how do we measure each one of these things? What is economic growth? How do we determine whether or not our country is, quote unquote, growing? With 14 graphs that we're going to learn how to do? <laughs> well, I wish. But <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, there are no graphs that go into this. But what is the? <laughs> <laughs> you mean, oh, no. oh darn. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we use? What's our measuring stick? How do we determine whether our economy is growing? Who tells us? Politics. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they do. And what do they tell us it is? What do they tell us measures economic growth? It's, it's purely housing, right? If there's more houses being sold, the economy's growing. If there's less houses being sold, then the economy's shrinking, right? I mean, that's all that matters is housing. Cars don't mean anything. Why didn't we let, let GM, Ford, and Chrysler fold then? They weren't a house. The market crashed. Right? The market crashed. So it's all driven by the, by the stock market, right? All we should look about is the stock market. As soon as the stock market's good, we're good, right? So the stock market's at an all-time high. So we're, our economy is, is as good as it can be, right? Why not? Other things to factor in. What are those things? What is the thing? What is the title of chapter 11? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Generally speaking, uh, let's, let's, let's figure out what gross domestic product is. But it is generally accepted as the measurement for our economic well-being. What is our gross domestic product? And what, again, I'm not going to write that out all the time. It will always be abbreviated. And you've got to get used to the abbreviation, because that's what they're going to say all over the place. right? If you watch any news organization, they're not going to say gross domestic product. They're going to say GDP. All right? And you need to know what it means. Right? Now you do. It's gross domestic product. What does it stand for? It stands for the market value of all final goods and services produced in a nation over a given time period. And that time period can be whatever your favorite time period is. It could be a quarter. It could be a month. It could be a year. It could be a decade. It could be a century. It could be an hour. 
There are some really weird people who literally watch GDP on an hourly basis. Those people are insane. Yes. But you could do it. Usually, we, know, we, we measure GDP on a yearly basis, but that, given the micro scope of the news media recently, we look at GDP literally on a monthly basis nowadays. All right? It's become a big deal because we care whether or not our country is growing or not because it has such a big effect on each and every one of you individually, right? If GDP went up from 16.7 trillion to 16.75 trillion, you guys noticed individually, personally. It affected you exactly in some fashion, right? It was either a gut punch if the number went down or it was a natural high if the number went up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's to me. But the, the fact remains is that this is what we use as a nation to determine whether or not we're growing or not. Right? It's just that's what we do. Right? All right, so please be cautious. Yeah. Please realize that prior to GDP, back GDP, we switched probably late 80s, early 90s, well, probably earlier than that, even mid 80s. We changed from being measuring our, our economic growth from GNP to GDP. GNP is gross national product. It's exactly the same as gross domestic problem product, but instead of it being in a nation, it's defined as by a nation. Okay? That the, otherwise, it's exactly the same, except change this in to by. In that, in that sense, what we were doing was trying to measure how did each American produce goods in a given year. All right? And back in the 80s, most Americans worked here in the United States. <laughs> most American companies produced and worked here in the United States. What's happened over the last 30 years that has changed that? There's lots more Americans working in other countries. And there's lots of foreign workers working in our country. Okay, And what we do right now is that if you are a foreign national working in this country, you are adding to US GDP when you work here, period. Okay, Because it's in the nation. If you are living in the United States or if you are working in the United States, you are adding to the United States GDP. Doesn't matter what country you are from. What's your, you know, what your passport says is unimportant anymore. It's purely where you are working. So if you are a Toyota company with an American factory in Texas or Kentucky or wherever, you are adding to US GDP even though you are a quote unquote Japanese company. Okay? So GDP is anything in the United States, physically, OK? So don't be confused with GNP. We did used to use that, but it just became too hard to do. And it didn't make sense, right? I mean, if, if you were working for Chrysler, but you were in Germany doing it, folks, you weren't helping the US at all by doing that. Because what Chrysler was doing is every amount of every dollar that they earned in Germany, they would not bring it back here to the United States because the US has one of the highest corporate tax rates in the world. And if we left the money in Germany as a Chrysler corporation, we would pay less taxes. So you do if you own Chrysler. <laughs> we use the money oh yeah. Or you would ship it to, you know, another country where corporate taxes are even lower, like, you know, Bahamas. There's a few other countries out there where their corporate tax rate and their corporate monetary rates are less than 2%. And that's why a lot of corporations will have a company in, you know. Is that where offshore accounts come from? Oh, yes. Oh. Very much so. Offshore accounts. What, what happens is that these companies actually create a subsidiary of themselves in these countries where they can ship all of their money so that they will pay less taxes there. Right? That's, that's a very Walmart, very, you know. No, it's very, very, very legal. The tax codes are written such that that is legal. It's frowned upon, though. Right? This is what Starbucks is getting pissed at right now. Right? Lots of foreign countries are suing Starbucks because they're taking all of their profit and shipping it to you know, a country that's only charging them 1% tax. 
because they have one store in that country. Right, why not, right? But it's considered bad public policy now to do that. And, and this is the push by a lot of buyers or individuals to say, if you're a corporation, you shouldn't just care about profit, right? <laughs> My own opinion is you at least give them a bit of a break considering a lot of their, well, not a lot, but a good portion of their profits are sent to Africa and ailing nations to help them out. Potentially. Regardless, though, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that here in a little bit, a little bit later. But the fact remains: the GDP. Now, I've put the word "final" in quotes. Final goods and services, which means that there are things that are then not final. <laughs> so, what is not final, <laughs> or not part of GDP? So. A lot of people think, well, as long as you sell something or as long as you buy something, you're affecting GDP, period. Buying and selling is what adds or subtracts to the government's production. But the fact remains is that it's not true. It's only in the sales and production of final goods and services. So the number one kicker is that used goods, or secondhand goods, as the book calls it, do not add to GDP. So if you go to the consignment shop and buy someone's old couch, you have not helped GDP at all. You are being anti-American. <laughs> Garage sales, anti-American. <laughs> well, but if the money wasn't in the US to begin with, it's OK for it not to come to the US. That's OK. <laughs> but. If you, because companies are never the problem, right? It's always, it's always people that are the problem, not companies. Their companies can do no wrong because they bought the politicians. Or they, 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 they have the right to make profit as well as the tax codes allow them to, period. If you shop at Goodwill, the problem you're causing is that you are not adding to the US GDP. You are taking your dollars and wasting them instead of buying something new. If you bought something new, GDP would go up. And if GDP went up, our economy would grow, we would see growth, the macro economy would take off, and we would all be happy again. How does it help at all to be that completely and utterly wasteful? I agree. You should only buy something new, ever. Then what is this selling to you? And then you're awful. You're rotten. You're terrible. Yes, thrift throw people are one of the worst things for this country ever because they're not adding to GDP because that's all we care about, right, is economic growth. That's what we want. If this country would just grow again, we would all be okay. So if everybody would just quit buying anything used and only buy something new, we would be golden. Saving, but you're not spending if you're saving. Saving is another one of those terrible things to do as an American. That's awful. You have to spend every penny you ever get on something final, something new. That's what will make the economy grow. That's what will make us great again. No, they're producing for a different country. We don't care about that. We don't care about that, right? All we care about is what's happening here. And if we would just start buying the stuff that was only made here. See, again, it's all the buyer's fault, always. Remember, this is corporate America. Yeah, we, can, we, can't, we can't buy Chrysler that was made in Germany anymore. We can only buy Chrysler that was made in the United States. You can buy a Toyota, but only if it's made in the United States. Go to the, buy, go to the Toyota shop, and when you go to buy it, Ask them, where did you make this? Did you make it in Tennessee or Kentucky or Texas or Michigan? If you did, then I'll buy it because that will add to the U.S. GDP. So but I can't buy my Audi? If the Audi was made in California, yeah. No. But then you have to ask. See, it's your job as a buyer. It's your responsibility, your civic responsibility to create economic growth. It's every one of you's jobs to do that from now on. Right. 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 Everything is not made in China. But all we care about is the U.S. GDP, right? Why do we want to be part of the world market if that's all we but care about? But all we care about is U.S. GDP. That's all we care about. That's what's going to make us better and great again, right? That's why we're not great right now is because we're not growing fast enough. It's not so much what the made in the U.S. 
That's right. All from now on, it's only made in the U.S. and only if it's new. It's got to be a final good and service too. None of this buying used crap. <laughs> final means ah. Final means new. Does it always mean new? What about like the housing market, for instance? Uh huh. Yeah, if you buy a used house, that's terrible. You shouldn't do it. Quit buying used houses. Only build new ones. If you're gonna get a, if you're gonna move, move to a new house only. Or knock down the old one and just put a new one where That works. I, that's perfectly good. Does it still use wood? So? Who cares how expensive it is? You gotta make this country grow. Are there any unfinal services? Well, Services are tough because usually when you finish a service, it's it's finished. But goods can be very easily used. They can also be something else. <laughs> Intermediate goods are also not GDP. So imagine, if you will, that you own a factory that creates nails and screws, right? So you, you bought a factory that you know, cranks out 200 million nails each year, whatever, the, the right length, the right size, whatever. When you sell those nails, some of those nails are going to go sold to housing companies who are going to take the nails, pound them into the boards that make a house. They're not going to necessarily use all the, the nails that they make and sell them to them, but the fact remains is that they're going to use those nails to build a house. Those nails are not a final product when they're put into a good that's going to be a final product. And all the screws that you sell, if you sell any of those screws to Ford, and Ford uses those screws to screw into a car, and the car is the final product, that screw that you sold to Ford, not a part of GDP. But if you take those nails and you sell them at, say, Ace Hardware, and Ace Hardware sells me a new hammer or new nail so that I can go in and build a you know, a, a better mousetrap or whatever, right? Then it is a final good or service. Because when you take a hammer or a screw and you put it into a car, the value of the car is what's being used to measure GDP. The s individual pieces inside of it, nah, those, do, those can't add up. It's the value of the car that has to be the sum total of all of those products. It is. So what about factories like SSI, where they make anti-lock brakes for cars? Yeah, those are not final goods and service. They add nothing to GDP, technically. Okay, what about auto parts stores? Ah, see, auto parts stores are good, right? If you go into an auto parts store and you buy yourself a new front quarter panel because you dented yours, that front quarter panel that, they, that you bought off of an auto parts store and put onto your car as long as it was new, that is adding to GDP. <laughs> if it's a used part, never, never works, right? Yes, exactly. If it's a specific sale directly to the consumer as a new item, then it's, then it's GDP. If it's not new directly to a consumer, sorry, then it's either used or intermediate. No, no. Used. Tired. Now, the service that the person provided to refurbish the item, that is a part of GDP. right? So if, you, if you're, a, if you're a, a realtor and you sell a house, a used house, the used house sale is not GDP, but the commission that the guy who sold it makes, that is GDP. The service was provided this year and is final. But the actual sale of the house itself, no, 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 no. That's worthless. Doesn't help the country at all. Who cares about family? All we care about is the country now, right? So again, <laughs> this is the macro economy. All we care about is the country now. You are now non-individuals. You are, you know, do not what, you know, do, ask not what your country can do for you or ask what you can do for your country. Hello, JFK, he may as well have stood up and said, never buy a used good ever again, right? I mean, that's what he was saying. Something like that. And call Maryland for me. <laughs> that was a service. <laughs> Would that be a final service? <laughs> 
All right, so here's the, the first definitive things that we learned that are not a part of GDP, but are tied to money, right? So a lot of times we think, as long as there's exchange of money going on, that it's GDP. These things, no. Right? It's got to be final. So you have to be careful when you read about a specific sale and make sure that it really represents the sale of something final. Because if it's not final, it's not GDP. Right? Yeah, essentially. Because eh, new is, uh, again, one of those. Because if you're making a new hammer or a new nail, that nail is new, right? But it needs, if you're putting it into a house, then it's an intermediate good. So it's new, but it's not final. But if, this ha if the nail is new and I buy it so that I can build a better mousetrap, then it is new and final. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any service that's provided currently in this year is a final service and will be accounted towards GDP. Doesn't matter. If you're providing a service and getting paid for the service, you do have to get paid for the service. So if those workers are not volunteers, then yes, then it's adding to GDP. Yeah, everybody's job is GDP. As long as you're getting paid legally, though. Mm -hmm. um, so an intermediate good would be like, for instance, it would be GDP as long as it doesn't essentially change hands a second time. Like with the nails, if it went from going to the carpenter to a purchaser, whereas if I bought them for myself, they didn't go to any other piece but me and the shop. Does that make sense? Uh, kind of, yeah. Um, Again, it's one of those where it, it's, it's, it's a little tough, right? So how does the company who is producing nails, how do they determine what nails they sold to people who are adding to GDP versus those who are not? Right? Because if, if an individual carpenter comes in and buys a whole bunch of nails, and that carpenter is going to use those nails to build a house, those nails shouldn't be a part of GDP. How does the store who's selling the nails know the difference between me, Joe Schmo? mousetrap builder versus professional carpenter who will only use the nails to build a house. With new houses, yes, right? So if they use if that carpenter uses that nails to build a new house, doesn't matter. It's still an intermediate. Doesn't matter. It's intermediate, right? That the nail is being used to build a house and the house is the final product. Whereas the ha the nail I, I purchase, what if I'm gonna take home and do whatever I'm gonna do with it, right? Hang up a picture, build a better mousetrap, whatever, those that is GDP. So the question is, how does the nail company know? How does the government know? Well, I'll give you an example. <laughs> I'm a contractor, so uh -huh. I have an account with Menards as a contractor. Yep, 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 yep. So what I buy are intermediate. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. So what's going up at the register most likely is a system of GDP. Yes. Uh -huh. Generally, that's how they try and do it. Try. Does it have to do with sales and use tax? Yep, sales and use tax, generally. Uh huh. So you won't pay as high of a tax if you were as a contractor buying it for a contract use because you're not generating GDP sales off of that technically. Right? So that's how the government tries to measure the difference between those. Right? And it's, it's tough right? because sometimes you may take some of the nails accidentally out of your, your contract you know, bucket and accidentally use them at home to hang up a picture. No, never. 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 Right, that would never happen. Right? But again, this is, this is what makes it hard to calculate what GDP is. I mean, we, we constantly are saying, well, GDP is exactly $16.785387463321 billion. Well, how can you know when you know half of the goods are in, in, intermediate, right? I mean, think about the, the number of parts that go into building a car. I mean, every one of those parts has to somehow be determined as intermediate as opposed to being final, right? When is it final? When is it not? How do we know? Well, essentially what happens is that it's a statistical average. The government actually takes statistical tests and figures out, well, this is sort of how it works, right? Okay. What are no, stupid question. <laughs> Hang on. If you sell a product, <laughs> if you sell a product that doesn't um, assist GDP, okay. where, what's the answer to the question? Nothing. 
We call it a... What we is intermediate? Well, what is the seed? If it, does not, if it doesn't do the gross domestic product, what is the seed? It's like nothing. It's just a transfer of money. That's all. That's it. That's it. Yep. It's transferring money for ownership, right? So, so when you have money in your pocket, right? If you have money in your pocket, your money, is that adding to GDP just sitting in your pocket? No. No. Now, this water bottle has already been added to GDP, right? Right? But let's suppose that Brandon decides to sell me this, this water bottle because I ask him to. I'll tell you, I'll give you $30 for this water bottle. And he's like, 30 bucks, this thing was worth 10. But he's like, oh, <laughs> yes, I'll do that. Right? Does the $30, it's already worth $10 to GDP already. If I give him $30 and we go through the appropriate tax ramifications, <laughs> should we add this again when it's already been added once? No. That's why you don't add it a second time. That's why used goods don't add anything, because the GDP is already in it once. Once it's been created. <laughs> True, probably. So, so that's the same with intermediate goods, right? Bec so how can we be accurate if we don't? Oh, we, we're, I don't, I'm not saying we're accurate. I'm just saying that's how we do it. <laughs> Would our entire economy collapse if we didn't know this average number? Of course. Okay. Good <laughs> Lord. How dare you? <laughs> this is. <laughs> Potentially. Or we don't count them the right way, or we count them backwards instead of forwards, or right? When is it? When is it GDP? When is it not? I mean, it's hard. I, you know, I'll grant you that. But this is the accepted way of doing it, so that's why we do it, right? I mean, it, it's not. It's not an exact science. I will definitely tell you this is not an exact science. And if you, as a nation, right? I mean, who reports on what GDP is for the for the U.S. every year? Do you guys know? No. Department of Commerce. Department of Commerce, which is, by the way, a, a, a department under the federal government, right? So if the federal government potentially wants to make itself look good, what might they tell the Department of Commerce? <laughs> which is what's been claimed a few times, right? Well, you just gave me an answer to a couple of quiz and chess questions right there. Maybe. Uh, this is not an exact science, so if I give you an answer, then we're all, I'm, uh, it should be OK, because this is not an exact science. <laughs> again, okay. again, this is this is what's been, uh, there are a lot. Most countries are under the same rules as we are for generating and calculating GDP. Right? They're supposed to be following the same rules so that everybody can compare apples to apples. Right? Look, count up all of their goods and the dollar amount that theirs are worth and compare them. Right? So if, if, if France is, has a, a GDP of 5.2 trillion and the US has GDP of 17.8 trillion, we're three times as more productive than France. Right? Because three times five gets us to. GDP. Your restaurant buys that bag of apples and makes apple salad or you know, different ways. Is it counted as GDP then? When they buy the app, when the when the when the the company when the the restaurant buys the the pies the apples, yes. When you convert them into apple pie, do you only put apples in them? No, you put a whole bunch of other stuff into them too. The apples are technically intermediate in between. But you are adding value to it by converting the apples with sugar inside of them, cinnamon inside of them. So all of those things add together. You use the example of the school buying apples, mm -hmm. selling them in the commons. Mm -hmm. So as the MP of the kitchen is buying a bag of apples, is that considered an intermediate good by them? Yeah. It is. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if we go to the store and we buy a bag. Well, technically, it's already intermediate too, right? Because the grocery store bought the apples from the seller, the maker themselves. That's when GDP hit. The right. The problem, the reason that the grocery store makes a difference is because what price were those apples worth when they bought them? They paid the producer a certain amount of money, but the actual value to GDP is how much we paid the store for them when they sold them. Double whammy, right? Which one is it? Is it the price that the that the, the grocery store paid to the apple producer, or is it the price that we paid to the store to get the apples? Which one is it? Right? Is it both? Is it less or more? This is what we what what the what the government actually does is averages the two. That's the actual add to GDP. Because somehow then the the grocery store adds value to the apples by grouping them together, or by allowing you to then weigh them and measure them and sell them.
because they're providing you with a quote unquote service. The selling of apples is a service which adds to GDP. The actual apple itself does not, but how much is that service of selling the apple worth? The difference between the price that they... So it's a it's very tricky and scary thing to think about once you get down into the rabbit hole, right? Because when do you determine whether it's this price or that price, right? When do you determine whether or not it's GDP or it's intermediate? I got an answer for that. It's not an exact science. <laughs> All right, so um, some other things that are not, oh, one more thing. Generally speaking, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. So, uh, <laughs> anything that doesn't involve money is also not part of GDP, obviously. If there's no money changing hands, then technically it's not affecting GDP. So if you know, if you barter goods from one person to the other, nope. So if you, you know, if you're going to trade this water bottle for my econ book, nope, right? Anytime you trade services with someone else, you are not helping the country at all. It's not a good thing. So if you're providing a service for someone else and that someone is providing a service for you, you should really use the appropriate taxation laws that the government has set up so that you can properly add to GDP when you do it, right? So if, if you're going to help someone study for econ and they're going to help you study for, you know, biology or whatever else you take, you should really be charging each other prices and taxes so that the government can properly track it and this country can grow. Nah. We only got about halfway through chapter 11. We'll finish it up tomorrow or Wednesday. Yeah, would you, Vic? Thanks.